Right, guys. So, unfortunately, we don't have Nicole on the show this week, so let's give oh, a big what? shout out to our sponsors. Gredo, you do the traffic, don't you, and your well, radio and stuff? So. That's a touchy subject, because unfortunately, I've been demoted for the travel, so I've um, had a good time doing it. Uh, three to four months, I'm probably up there with one of the best. I mean, John, you've been in radio f- since yep. 19 Canteen, I must be up there. Uh. I, I would say, you know, tra- uh, Sally Traffic on Radio 2 is shiting herself. Yeah, well, I've mean, took me off travel and I've warned them if she's ever on the seek, don't expect, don't come running to me because I know so who, who's, who's took over from you. It's producer Holly, which she's done oh, a producer grand producer job. Holly. She's done an absolute grand job. Right. So you've no, excuse me, I, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, mate, because you were doing a good job and I listen to go radio in the morning going to work because you know I text you and stuff, but I'm sorry. Cool, to hear that, mate. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry. But it's fine. It's 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 anyway, fun. remember. If you've been in a road traffic accident or you're not at fault, G4 Claims can make it easy for you. They can provide you with the complete accident management support you require. They'll recover their costs from the at-fault party. They'll sort you out with a like-for-like vehicle replacement. They will also organise your vehicle to be repaired at one of their approved body shops and return to you. Should your vehicle be deemed a write-off, they will recover the pre-accident value for your car and write you a big, fat cheque for it. And best of all, it won't cost you a penny as they charge the at-fault insurance direct G4 claims don't cold call, they don't buy data, and once they've processed your claim, your insurance will remain unscathed. And the best thing is, the core of the team over there won't take on your case if they don't think they can help. So, if you've been in a road traffic accident or know someone that has, go on to G4 claims on 01698 767 172. That's 01698 767 172 and get them at notatfaultclaim.com or find them on social media at G4 Claims Limited. G4 Claims. Not at fault. Not at fault. Made easy. Made easy. easy. Let's welcome to Football Daft. He's a man who's guided Livingston to a top six finish this season. It's the one, it's the only. He's fit, he's proper. It's David Martindale. David, how you doing, mate? Not bad, not bad. Thanks very much. Listen, we are all buzzing to get you on this podcast, aren't oh. we? We're, we're, oh, we're this is, it's one of the ones you know is coming up and you're going, right, I'm really mm-hmm. looking forward to this one, mate, honestly. It's no, just be a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, wait a minute, for you or for us? I know. <laughs> probably, probably for me, let's be honest. Uh, yeah. after, after this, the four is just sitting down a, a podcast for somebody's I'll, last I'll basement be, I'll, or I'll something. I'll be doing you. <laughs> <laughs> podcast, anyway, yeah. I'll be looking for a job next week. <laughs> Not nah, at I'll, all, mate. No, I mean, we, we, I mean, where do we even step with us, right? Because I tell you, the first time I, I, I really noticed you was... Obviously, well, obviously the Levinson results, but that sounds a bit creepy. What's that? <laughs> That's it. I never noticed them. First time I've noticed you. <laughs> as long as it wasn't through my living room window. <laughs> I think to myself, I bet you Johnny Watson is kicking himself. That he stopped in only excuse my case. He would go to town on you. And that's not a bad thing, by the way. I'm just saying for no. years and years there's never been a proper character in Scottish football. No, you I mean you're the top dog. I'll take it as a compliment, Grado. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, have you always been a fan of football growing up? <laughs> <laughs> this is his new question to kick off the podcast every week, mate. We're no, we're no hitting me with that one, are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. David, tell us, how did you get, tell us, take us back, tell us your story. How did you get involved with Livingston? I came in, came in as a volunteer coach on a Tuesday morning, a Thursday morning. John McGlynn, I knew the boy who was running the club at the time was a guy called Neil Rankin. I had a couple of coffees with him and he was looking for somebody to come in and help him. Club were in a bad place financially. So came in Tuesday morning, Thursday morning. I had a construction company. And eventually one thing led to another. You were in, in the afternoon doing different bits and bobs, helping out, fixing things, upgrading things, um, repairing different stuff. And then I just six months after that, John had, John McGlynn had uh, left, left the job. So Mark Burchill took over. Mm-hmm. And Mark was a Livingston boy. I'd obviously worked with him for six months previously, and Mark Mark kept me about the place. And then Mark left a year later, and David Hopkins was Mark's assistant. David got the job, Hoppy, and Hoppy mm-hmm. asked me to be his assistant manager. It was 2015, 16, and that's it. Ever since then, I've been in at the club probably on a full time basis, 60, 70 hours a week. It's it's been tough to be honest because there's been a there's been a lot more bad times than what I'd probably say good times, but mm. 
nobody sees that side of it, how hard you've worked or behind the scenes. But for the last probably five years, it's been very productive and very positive because we got relegated that year when myself and Hawkey took over. We got relegated to League One. Following year, we won League One. We broke a lot of club records doing so, the most wins, most goals scored, all this type of thing. And the following year, we're in the championship. And then before you know it, and a year later, we're in the Premier League. So we got back-to-back -back promotions and then suddenly I was sitting in the Premier League. Brilliant. But you see, you see there's ups and downs, but surely the last six months have kind of made up for a lot of the bad times because what are run you're having. Oh, it, is, but it has been hard work at the club. There's been a lot of turmoil at the club since I've been here, but the football inside has been very stable. I've been very fortunate that I've been left alone to run the football side probably for 2016. I've basically, I've done everything in a footballing sense. So kept the boardroom away from the footballing department, which I think always helps, to be honest. David, obviously, like, I'm a big Rangers fan. Right, a couple of weeks ago, Rangers are gone there. I think Grado will agree with me. We're sitting going, I don't know how this game's going to go. It's not a place you want your team to go because you're so hard to beat, so well organised, like... What's the secret behind that? It's just really hard work on the training ground. I think there's a lot of hard work goes on in the training ground, but we've got a culture and environment at the football club where boys come in. I let the boys be themselves, encourage them to be their own personality. When I first came into the club, I'll, I'll go into a wee bit more detail. When I first came into the club, it was everybody sitting in the office. It was very politically correct. Mm. Since I've came in, I've just I just let the boys go and be themselves. So we come in, we have a right good laugh at the club, but seeing me cross the white line to go to training, we work extremely hard. We mm -hmm. probably do three to four different sessions per day, and I think this is all the hard work that people, it goes unnoticed. Our players are in the club roughly quarter past nine, and they probably don't leave the football club to around half three, quarter to four. If you probably compare that to a lot of other football clubs, the boys are in 10, half 10, 11, and they're away home at one o'clock, so... Mm -hmm. We work Aye. extremely hard and we keep the boys here. We've all got there's a good work ethic amongst the staff and that translates into the players. Right. Yeah, you were saying there that um how harmonious a dressing room you've got and how well everybody gets on, you have a great laugh and stuff like that. Um there was one transfer that you made that kinda I don't know if, if maybe his attitude or whatever uh wasn't he right for the club, but yeah, you brought in Tony Stokes and he was away again a, a mm. week or so later. Was it was in what what can you tell us about well, that? Stokes, he's a great lad, right? Just very right. Honestly, he's a really, really good lad. He's one of, he's someone who probably fitted into our culture, our environment really well. The problem with Stokes here is he, he probably came in a wee bit more unfit than we both realised at the time. So when he came in, he was a wee bit overweight, but we thought that's not a problem. We worked hard at the club, we'll, we'll get that off him. But because of the intensity of the training, he really struggled with his groins. So he was only in a week or so, he was getting a lot of uh, knee problems, and that's comes. A lot of people find it difficult to adjust to the actual tough surface. There's no actually a story here, by the way. What went out in the press was a lot of it was the truth. So Aye. the actual tough surface, he came in, he was feeling that on his joints. I couldn't quite get him up to speed because when we got, we were getting somewhere, he would pick up an injury that would then put him back again. <coughs> and to be honest, Stokes, he probably doesn't live his life perfectly away from the football club. <laughs> see when, see yeah. when Stokes is in the club, honestly, he's a great lad and he's a talented, talented individual. But I would, uh -huh. I think Stokes, he would probably agree with what he does away from the football club. He's not always conducive to a, a professional football player. But I do yeah. think if it wasn't for these slight niggles, I think we would have got the best out of Stokes because... He was probably leaving the club. He was going home. He was injured. He wasn't training with the first team because he was in a rehab program. And I don't think that helped the two years because I think if Stokes had managed to stay fit and we got him fitter, I think we'd had a right good player on our hands. Aye. Aye. You, you, you probably you touched on it there, the, <clears throat> that official pitch, right? No, I'm going to be honest, you, you, you probably can ask yourself, but a lot of the fans watching it, they think it's murder. Yeah. But, you, you probably know different that it's all comes down to finance and stuff like that, but do you use that pitch to play it to your advantage when you're playing other teams? See what, see what folk don't know, right? See when, see when you get beat, see when they come to Livingston and we get beat, nobody speaks about the artificial surface. Aye. See every time you get beat, it's a pitch, it's a pitch. Now that part, 
the exact same <coughs> part as Hamilton's, right? We got them for the same manufacturer two weeks apart. <laughs> The only difference with Hamilton's Park is they paid, like, I think it was 30, 40 grand extra to get green pellets. And see, I thought at the time we just came in the Premier League, we never had a boat. I'm like, Aye. we can't spend, spend 40 grand just to change the colour of the pellets. So with the pellets being green, it makes the park aesthetically look that much better. Whereas the black mm-hmm. pellets, you can see it when the splash comes. But mm-hmm. anybody that comes to play here or train here, every single player loves the surface. It's really, mm-hmm. really true. See, if you actually look the last two months in Scottish football, you look at the state of some of these grass parks. Yeah, that's true. Now, honestly, some of them are horrific. Aye, I cutting take, up so bad, a lot of them, man. It's rolled mud. Some of them are rolled mud. I would take that yeah. park over any grass park at this point in time, or right. most grass parks in the Premier League. Mate, I'll be honest with you, every time you're playing well against us, we're on a group chat, me and my mate. It's that pitch. It's that pitch. <laughs> it's that he can't pitch. adjust. He can't adjust. <laughs> See, before Rangers come, I put more black pellets on it. Because so <laughs> 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 when was it, man? It was, was it last season or the season before? Dolly Menga scored. He's beaten Aye. 1-0. Aye. Oh, mate, I've never been I was so depressed that day. Me and my mates are sitting going, it's that fucking pitch. It's that pitch. Aye, you're looking going, oh, Aye. Where is he now? Where's Big Dolly Menga now? Big Dolly went to Angola. I got him back. When he came back, he was 15 stone heavier. So <laughs> he, he got sent away pre season. got sent away pre season and he got told, don't come back here with your body fats higher than what they are and don't come back here any heavier than what you are. Dolly shakes my hand and goes, no a problem, Davey, and comes back 35% over everything. Oh. So, <laughs> Big Dolly, honestly, again, another, another absolute, his technique and his strength was incredible. Aye. I just think it, Aye, you know it, it was. I emptied his house, so he went back to Belgium. <laughs> went back to Belgium and I had to, like, we rent a house, the, the club rented a house, Dolly paid for it, but we got it through the club. I think it was, when was that? August. Still had his Christmas tree up. <laughs> August. August last year, I went to make sure the house was all right. His Christmas tree still up. All he done was sit and play FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> and eat. I on the park as well. See, if you look at Dolly, I actually think he thought he was playing FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> but, but here, that's what I love about you, because last week I was listening to the press conference, man, and you were getting torn into Marvin Bartley. I don't know, was it was it you were calling him? You were going, tell me it was rubbish, man. If you oh, see Marvin Bartley, let him know. But is that how it has to do is, does that work, man? Just being honest. I think the boys, like, listen, there was a wee bit of tongue in cheek with that one with Mark because I think the press were trying to be clever. They said Big Mark came off with a skill. He never. Big <laughs> Mark came off, he came off brand new because he had subbed him. And the truth behind him getting subbed was we were needing to put an offensive player on and Big Mark's more of a defensive midfielder. So Aye. I needed to put an offensive midfielder on because we were getting beat. Mm-hmm. But I just used that opportunity to cane the big man because he never misses an opportunity <laughs> in here. So, <laughs> use every That's... opportunity I can. That's brilliant, but all that kind of camaraderie between the management and the players, man. That's it, what you want, but in your it, team, it? My, my office is about two metres for the changing room. Our right. office is heaving me players all the time, coming in, having a laugh, stealing biscuits, stealing de- everything. I'm in the changing room a lot, so there's a really... I, we talk about the we. It's all about the we, not the, them and the us. I hate that. I hate that when I had work as a, a hierarchy. Of course, there's people that are in charge, but a hierarchy and they don't mix. I hate that. I hate uh, it's it's always so, the best to have an open-door policy, I think, isn't it? It just does. The boys yeah. are never out of the office. And listen, I can be brutally honest at times, but I think the boys do appreciate that. I played football, never played professional football, but it's relevant to you at that point in your life. And I just used to hate when managers used to talk a lot of rubbish to you, or oh, you're getting up today, I'm just going to rest you. You're no, you're, you're no resting me, I was brutal last week, just tell me Aye. the truth. I hate that. I always try and be honest with the boys. They might not like it, but I always try and be honest with them. So Davey, I watched the, I watched the cup final. Uh, it was... Obviously, you had, you had a brilliant run in the lead-up to the cup final. Yeah. Now, everything that you had done so far this season was perfect. What the fuck were you thinking, putting Bartley at left wing? Do you see, to be honest, I'll, t- I'll tell you, I'll be brutally honest with you. Big Sean Rooney, right? It was the ge- Part of the game plan was stopping Sean Rooney. Stopping Witherspoon coming in in his right foot and stopping Sean Rooney. The rest of them are good players, but I think I had enough in the locker to deal with it. I lost 
Neil Harris got sacked by Millwall mid-January. Eh, sorry, Cardiff. Neil Harris got sacked for Cardiff mid-January. I had the big boy, Kieran Brown, my big left centre-half, my left wing-back. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, spoke to Neil. Neil said, aye, ah, you're cool. You'll have him. You'll have him the rest of the season. So I said, brilliant. Um, then Mick McCarthy got the job late January. And the, the, loan, the loan agreement was up in January the 31st. And I found out a day before the loan agreement was up that Cardiff were recalling him, Mick McCarthy was recalling him. So I lost, I lost a physical presence on the left-hand side of the park. So I signed Jackson Longridge, but Jackson, Jackson's five foot nine. And I signed a boy called Gibriel Diani for Grasshopper Zurich on loan. And he was going to be a direct replacement for Kieran. But because he scored on the UK leaving the EU Brexit, aye. Mm -hmm. aye. Gibriel's came in and I'm still waiting on a work permit for him. So Gibriel <sighs> would have been playing in that game and he would have directly played against Sean Rooney. So mm. I had to come up with some kind of plan to stop Sean Rooney scoring goals. Ultimately, Sean Rooney scores for a set player at wins in the game. Mm -hmm. So it was more about nullifying Sean Rooney and his aerial threat because he liked to hit a diag for Jamie McCarthy at left centre half to Sean Rooney at right wing back in your box. So it was partly trying to find, partly still play the way we play, but nullify the way St Johnson played. And to be fair, I don't think the two teams were great in the day. And I always think, I say to you boys, one goal was going to win that game. I had that all edit, mate. I, I enjoyed had that it, game. Man. I actually enjoyed the game. It was a bit blood and thunder, like an old school mm -hmm. cup final. Aye. Uh, you never um, enjoyed it. What happened was they scored this because we up until they scored, I think we had we were probably a little more dominant. We looked about, uh, we looked probably the team that was maybe going to go and score a goal. There wasn't much in the game at that point. But we Josh Mullen had a shot at Big Sander tipped round the post. Aye. And Aye. We looked like we looked like a team that were getting a wee bit of a foothold in the game. They get a corner. And big Rooney goes up and scores. It's one 0 See after that, it's thirty minutes into the game. The back three don't come out of their shape. Their two wing backs drop in with the two centre mids. They've got seven behind the ball. Ah, it's, it's hard to play against that. It's really, really difficult to break down. And I never really had a physical presence up top. I never had that big striker, big jet went on, but we made a lot of changes, but we were just it kinda. Changing. You needed a big, a big dykes up there or you something, mate. Yeah, yeah, it's brilliant up top, but he's not the most mobile. Whereas mm -hmm. London, London's got a bit of everything. Yeah, he's got a bit yeah. of everything. So the, the set play wins the game. Set play, Sean Rooney scores it. Fair play to the big man. Mm. And that wins the game. And it changes the dynamics of the game because they just go come and beat me. And it, yeah. to be fair to them, they defended their half. They defended their box really well. So fair play to them. I, I mean, enough. you've definitely got your finger on the pulse and stuff. I, I think back to that game that you played Celtic midweek. Do you remember, Bob? And it was oh, Martindale rests nine players. And we, were giving it, we were giving it, oh, fuck, fuck. We skin on, weren't we? <laughs> we were, oh, but aye. But you, aye, in a group chat, Matt. There's a fuck here. That's free Come on. Time tonight. Fuck's sake. <laughs> I've got the screenshots, Grado. I like to speak to you about that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't win, right? You go to you go to Park Keaton, you get a draw in the Rangers fans' eyes. Ah, he's a good Rangers man. He's a good Rangers man. You go and take points off Rangers and the Celtic. Oh, he's a good Celtic man. He's can he win. Uh, what are you, David? Are you a Rangers? He's, a, a, he's a good fan? junior man. He's a I good was, junior man. I was, I was brought up a Rangers fan. I'm from Dublin originally, so I was brought right. up a Rangers fan. But I'll be brutally honest. I think I'm a football man. See when Brendan Rodgers had Celtic playing the way they were playing with the trebles, right. I thought they were brilliant. I used to enjoy no. really watching Celtic, but mm. I grew up a Rangers fan. But to be honest, I'm a Livingston fan now. Aye, aye, aye. aye. of course. Well, see, you play junior football. Did you ever play the Buffs? <laughs> no, you, you like, did I ever play in the Buff? No. <laughs> <laughs> see, when when you were going through the whole fit and proper thing, was your ass making buttons a wee bit? No, I was. Honestly, to be fair. I wasn't bothered either way. Obviously, I wanted to be made a bit. I wanted to carry on being the Livingston manager, but I never actually gave it too much thought because I'd been I'd been custard pie for the last three years previously. Aye. So it was just kind of water over ducks back. And if anything, I think you learn in life. Don't worry about stuff you can't control. I had no Aye. control over it. Whatever was going to happen, I'd have moved on. I'd have took it in the chin and moved on. 
So would you have, would you have stayed with the club, Davy? Yes, I think so. I think so. I think I, we had a there was a legal. Let's, route. let's let's be honest. Would you have really have just been the manager that had a, a patsy in place? Of course I would have. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about. But to be fair, it was a legal route that the club were very confident that if we went down, that we'd have got past a fit and proper person. Mm. So it was, it was all our avenues we could have explored, but yeah. I think you've got to take your hat off to the SFA. I think fair play to them, fair right. play to them, because it could have been really easy to knock me back. It could all have right. been, but when you look at some of the folk that have been involved in Scottish football over the years, fucking see if that them, see if you get knocked back, back, man. Oh, oh, exactly, exactly. I think, I think the public opinion was a lot of positivity in social media with the public, and I think that really helped. To be honest. I think that's like we said earlier on, you have been such a, a breath of fresh air in the game. You know what I mean? You've mm. there's nobody, I don't think there's anybody in Scottish football that thinks you're an arsehole, do you know what I mean? So it's apart from me and Grado when you rested nine players against Celtic that night. That's what made me think you were a great guy. Is that is there ever any like I don't know, David, like obviously you're doing really well at Livingston, right? And you see, like, the Aberdeen job is open now. Has there been any approach for anybody to acquire your services? Right. Aye, well, the Celtic jobs, you grew up in Govan, come on. Right. To be fair, I've been offered different positions over the years before I became the manager, or I've been asked, do you want to apply for this, do you want to apply for that? But to be fair, like, I owe Livingston a lot more than what Livingston owes me, if that makes sense. And see, Aye, totally. I, listen, do I want to progress in my career? Of course I do. Of course I do, but am I any quick hurry to go to Livingston? No, mm. really. No, really. Until the chairman and the chief executive come down and say to me, look, Davy, there's a club came in for you, we want you to move on, or look, Davy, you're hopeless, away you go, son. Whatever it is, I'm here until the club don't want me here. Mm-hmm. Aye. That's, that's, what I say, that's what I say about River City every year, man, my contract's up, mate, do you know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's what I say about football daft. It's still going. <laughs> What is that, mate? Never said he's still going. Mate, it's still going, mate. It's still going. I've not been for it yet. It's still going, mate. Still he's going. a Doc Cotton. He's a the Ken Barlow at that show, mate. He'll never, he'll I be there to the back. Like flick the channel, no seen it for 30 years and everybody's still the same. <laughs> Aye. No, no seen it since 30 years and I put their hair now and what I did have then, mate. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I knew, I knew you were going to get in there. <laughs> Just running about with a face mask now. <laughs> Aye, mate. Two metres, mate. Two metres shouting each other across the streets and all that, not me. Is that a, like, a shell suit face mask? <laughs> a, a Kappa face mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, David, I heard you talking once in an interview about the old... It was, where is it you done your coaching badges? You went to Ireland today, didn't you? I uh, had to the SFA when they take me. Right. Is that, is that the crack with that? Right. But I, I, I thought that you had maybe... Personally picked up because is that not the place to be nowadays? Is gone through? Is it quicker or something? It's a, you can so you can get put. You, you've got to do a lot of work away for the Irish FA, but you can go on a two week intensive and you'll do ninety percent of your B license and probably fifty percent of your A license one year. You'll come away for the club and then you'll do all your coaching at the club, send in your videos and stuff. So I think it's a quicker process, but. On my court, I, I found the Irish FA absolutely brilliant. Mm. I felt, do you know, they were just like us. Like, they were all, it was really, you were really comfortable with them. Jim McJolton, Nigel Best, Tommy Johnson, there was a, Alan Walker, there was a good few, and they were just really, really good lads. Really, really good lads that were there to help me, and I found it brilliant. I was quite fortunate with the, the course that I landed on. I never had a clue who anybody was in that course. Never mm. had a clue. I'm shouting at folk, I'm like, get that done, you need this, we know doing that for. And then it wasn't about four or five days into the course. I got talked with her. I was sitting there, Craig Gardner, Craig had played with Birmingham. He's yeah. in the relief mm-hmm. lawyer now, but Craig's been in there a few years. <clears throat> Craig's like, you know who that is, don't you? So I've not got a clue. It was Luis, Luis Garcia that played with Liverpool and Barcelona. Really? Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm shouting at him, trying to tell him how to like, make striker runs. Guy was probably one of the best strikers, strikers in Europe, and I'm trying to tell him what to do. Do you know when the European Cup will ever Aye. Aye, aye. The only pass up with him and, him and Messi go to training. But, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, I had, oh, 
Oi, Bruno. fucking move. Bruno, Bruno Salt said, played with Brighton that year in the Premier League. Aye, aye. So Bruno was on the course. Craig Gardner, Chris Samba, and I had the sport and Lisbon manager, Ruben, Ruben Amor. Ruben was at Braga at the time, but he's now a sport and Lisbon manager. So Gabby Agbon Like Brilliant. the players, I, I never got a clue who anybody was. I'm trying to tell them what to do. Some, some wee Scottish guy like shouting, shouting abuse at them. <laughs> that is class, man. That is, but Lewis Garcia, just tell him how to do forward runs and all that. Oh, that is that. <laughs> touch, your touch needs to be better, big man. <laughs> See him looking at me going, who the this? <laughs> Like Chris Samba, Samba, he must be six foot six, and I'm trying to tell him how he did a ball. (laughs) Honestly, I genuinely, genuinely didn't know who anybody was. Genuinely didn't know anybody. I came into professional football and I've not been outside of Livingston. Mm. That's probably. That's probably. Who anybody was. That is class, man. Did I talk about, did we talk about that? Thing did I mention that at the front about the when you got was it manager of the month and you were met to day forties for the press and you, you were just like I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not in this and, and did you know donate your trophy for it or something uh, like, so, you know raffle it off or something like, I swear to God like even the cup final medal that seems really probably arrogant but it's no you got beaten the cup final what am I like to sit and look at a losers medal for uh, like, uh, so uh, we uh, I got the manager of the month. I got my, my daughter, Georgia, Georgia's eight, my, my missus Martha through, and I got the club to take a picture. I, what am I going to do with a trophy sitting about my house? <laughs> so I said, mm-hmm. I've got a picture. It means a lot to me, but I've got a picture with my wife and my wee one. I said, so go and auction it off, and the boys auctioned it off, and they raised three and a half thousand pounds for charity. Yeah, from, I mean, oh, you know, man. See, I, that's, that's tremendous. Here, the boy, the boy that won it, you know, big John Guffrey, my centre half. Mm-hmm. Yes. Big Aye. Guffrey, it was his dad. He's obviously stays in England. His dad won the raffle and he emailed the club back and goes, Look, I really, really want David to keep the trophy. Can you ask him? Can you please keep the trophy? So I ended up keeping the trophy, but we raised three and a half thousand pounds for me in the Raffle it again. Can <laughs> <laughs> use this one for a holiday? <laughs> <laughs> but, see, but as well, see what this obviously you've been on ITN news and stuff comes up in the paper and all that. Is it is it been hard for your family? Because this has just kind of come out, out of the blue in the last six months, really, isn't it? I think, I think that previously I agreed with like my missus, it was probably negative stuff she was reading for the last five, Aye. six years. No, I don't know about yourself, but I don't really buy newspapers anymore. You read everything online. So Aye, totally. it's quite easy not to read about yourself if you don't want to just stay away from football sites and all that kind of thing. So I think it was she seen it as a massive positive when I was doing the media, and it was generally it's been very positive. So I think it was it was a breath of fresh air for Martha to actually be reading Aye. about it in a positive way, opposed to be let's be honest, opposed to being on the front pages, you're on the back pages. So. Aye. Mm-hmm. I think she found that as a really positive experience. Obviously, it's well documented that you spent time in prison and stuff. But are you ever at that point? If you go back, if you go back to then, the ever can you envisage it's went through circle that you're now the manager of Livingston, top six finish, going for it in the league and all that. I think I think now I can until I was fit and proper. Like you passed mm-hmm. that, I probably couldn't let yourself think about that in case it never happened. But right. looking at it now, but. I don't know. I don't really. I don't really get too high, and I don't really get too low, and I don't really. Like, oh my God, sixteen years ago you were in prison. I don't really feel like I just come into my work every day, work as hard as I can, do the best as I can, and I'll see where it takes me. I don't really look back in the past. If I'm honest, I'm never going to forget my past. I don't want to forget my past. I don't want to forget what happened to me, what I done to people. But it also brings a certain amount of humbleness to you. Aye. Like, see, before I went to prison, I was probably one of the most materialistic people you could ever meet. You want to go and buy the Armani jeans, you G-star and all that. Aye, <laughs> Aye you, were, you were not kicking about with one black yeah. train on, one blue train on, were you? No chance. No chance I'd have paid the paradas. Right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But 
you, you, but I think. Do you're running about in goalies? I know I've got Umbros. <laughs> <laughs> That's no disrespect to any of the fans, by the way. <laughs> in case yeah. you want to sponsor you. Aye. <laughs> uh, Gola, I grew up with Gola. But no. you, you, I think you become a wee bit vain. You become a wee bit materialistic when you go into prison. Everybody's in the same T-shirt. Everybody's aye. in the same jeans. You're wearing somebody else's underpants for the day before. Like, aye, aye, you become... I, I think it resets you as a person. And you come aye. out and you've got different values. Family, I realised how important family was. No going out every weekend with my pals, like acting the lad, if for want a better word. Your family, it, it does resets you as a person and it you reevaluate what's important in life and what's not important. Because I think it's very easy in life to get carried away. I of course, mate. Aye, it is, man. Aye. You end up somewhere you don't want to be. It's a character building experience if you can use it for that. Yeah. You know what I mean, a lot of people don't, but obviously, clearly, you have. And you know, more, more power to you, mate, because yeah. not everybody would, would have uh, travelled the same road that you did after. No, 100%. But I do. There's a vicious circle that people are stuck in as. Like, before, like, I never used to think, oh, like, I'll try and, you're concerned the supply of drugs. Everybody takes cocaine. That's how I seen it. Everybody mm. takes it. They're on the telly. Every night out, I was on. Everybody I knew in the pub, club, disco was taking it. So mm -hmm. you sugarcoat you know it. You sugarcoat it and go, okay, it's all right. Everybody does it. Aye. It's Aye. on the telly. It's all right. Like, you, you go on the telly and it's all superstars doing these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then... But it's not until you go to prison and you go, God, see, you actually see the impact it's had in people's lives. Mm -hmm. But drug addicts in there, then you look at people that are in jail through drug addiction and what it's done to their families and what it's done to their victims. And you can actually properly look at it and go, what, the, what did I do? What was I doing? What was okay. I thinking? But on the outside, you don't think like that. You sugarcoat it and you're like, it's all right. It'll never happen to me, that kind of... And, Aye. One of the ones, but it's not until you go in and see the impact drugs has in society that you, you properly think about it. Aye, but it's, I always say it's more common than going for a pint now. It is, it is. I had oh, bath in this once. That's all you found in the Saturday morning, on the Sunday morning, Friday morning, was stuff lying over your toilets, paraphernalia for people taking drugs. Mm -hmm. Aye, it's, it's, mental, eh? it's mental, it's modern day society. Aye. 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 Well, what, David, on a totally separate note, how did Beaton not get that penalty last week? He's got a Celtic tattoo, hasn't he? Why <laughs> <Boy, laughs> didn't To be fair, that was a stonewall penalty in real yeah. time. And I think it's quite easy in real time to make your own decision. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even when John's not gave a penalty, I'm thinking to myself, that'd be like me a penalty. I mean, that wasn't a penalty. You start saying, yes, I would mm -hmm. absolutely hate to be a referee. I would hate <laughs> to be a referee. It, it looks, they have got a tough, tough oh, job, but terrible. would he? Oh, but, but, but see the likes of, because as a punter, you're sitting there watching it, and you see me see managers going to approach a referee, and they're going, oh, away from me, off you go, on you go, aye. cannot. And then you hear managers talking about it, the, and sometimes the, the referees are speaking to them like shite. Is there something that can be? Do you think as a does that happen? As should there be something sorted that these can have a see decent me, conversation? Or see for me, Grado, right? I, I truly believe that there's no referee in the Scottish Premier League that goes out there to make bad decisions. I don't Aye. think there's a vendetta against teams or you're a no. Catholic, you're a Protestant. He likes Livingston, and he hates Motherwell. He loves Motherwell, he hates Livingston. I don't think any official goes out to make a bad decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's say the shoe was on the other foot and it was John Beaton, he's no Dave Livingston, apparently. I don't think I'd have approached him because he's no meant it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so I, I totally mean, I know what you're saying. I tend to just stay away. I slaughter the linesmen and I slaughter the fourth officials. <laughs> but I, I tend to stay away for the referee because he's not going to change his decision. No, I, think, that's certain, it? I genuinely believe he's, he's not done it in purpose. He's made a mistake. Mm -hmm. By the way, I'm the last one that can slaughter anybody for making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> so, Aye, that's so, right, you paid Big Marvin on the left. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I want that edit to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, David, it's been great, man. I don't like to take up any more of your time, apart from 
There is the 92nd football daft quiz. You up for that? Um, horrendous at quizzes, but go for it. Bro. Right, mate. So every week on Football Daft, we put our guests, Scottish football knowledge for the test for our 92nd quiz. Oh. Top of the leaderboard is John Sutton and Chick Young with 15. And we've got like Mark... To help me here. <laughs> if you want, mate. Mark Wilson and Keith Lazar are tucked in behind with 14. Well, the good Dr. Kenny Joker, Peter Grant and Kevin Harper are just behind in third place with 13. We've I'm also got Murdo McLeod. <laughs> Murdo McLeod on 10. <laughs> you won't, mate. Well, I'll say at the bottom, right at the bottom, it's a tie between Peter Lovinkranz, Derek Johnson, Craig Levine, and Mick Pat Line, and they're all on three. What, what about Barry Feastenders? What's he on four? Barry Feastenders is four. He's been, he's been sensationally axed for the last this week. He's not. I know, he's, he's on four. He's on four. Barry, Barry Feastenders was on that Zoom call with that heart with an <laughs> E on it. <laughs> <laughs> is that no Barry Feastenders? Hey, Sally! <laughs> <laughs> and the fucking Phil Mitchell sitting across from me <laughs> <laughs> right so Barry do you want to answer, ask your questions Barry right okay right we'll do it. <laughs> now, now you can't pass right you can't pass so that's what I shout to Big Marvin every week <laughs> <laughs> right. you can get any answer you want right. right any answer you want but you can't pass right are we ready John which SPFL team are known as the Loons? Porter. Name one of the former Scottish Premiership managers currently managing an English Premiership. Ooh, David Moyes. No, that's wrong. Who did St Johnson resign Stevie May from? Resign. Aberdeen. <laughs> when were Livy formed? 1995. Name Carrie Caldwell's footballing brother. Oh, oh, Stephen. What Southampton striker has just been called into the Scotland squad? Jay Adams. Who did Lyndon Dink sign for from Livy? QPR. What club does Brian Rice currently manage? Hamilton. Name any Scottish team with City in their name. Leighton. Which SBFL club stadium is the furthest south in Scotland? Queen of South. What no, and in Athletic. What club does Scotland goalkeeper David Marshall play for? No, and no, no. Wigan. Which side did George and Jones sign on loan for? Sunderland. Which former Celtic striker took over at Livingston after John McGlynn? Mark uh, Botchell. Which Scotland international is currently playing with Sporting Kansas City? Johnny Russell. Dave Cormack is the chairman of which Scottish Premier team? Aberdeen. Which team, which team are nicknamed the Suns? Dumbarton. Who has been just appointed as Morton manager? Uh, Gus McPherson. What is the capacity of Almond Vale to the nearest 1,000? Time! Oh, oh. Oh. oh! Got that last one in. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait. No, we need to ask you. There's one more question. Oh, right. oh. Hold on. We'll let you finish. We'll, I'll just repeat that question, right? Um, how many grams are in an ounce? 28. <laughs> <laughs> can, I get a, can that be a bonus point? <laughs> I, yeah, I think you're going to be... Close to the top of the leaderboard. Well, 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 I'm telling you, man. Well, well, that, that, well. Was, that was shit hot, by the way. Let's go through your wrong answers, David. Um, former Scottish Premiership managers, currently managing English Premiership. Currently, you could add two because Brendan Rogers is one. Oh. Paul Heckenbottom's the other because he's in temporary charge of Sheffield. Do you know where I was going at? He's thinking Scottish. Yeah, uh, straight to you. Um, Strenrar is the furthest south, yeah. not Annan. Uh, you know what? I should know that. Just, you should. Yeah. Um, David Marshall currently playing with Derby. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Do you and, know it? Do you know it? I know it, Wigan. <laughs> <laughs> apart, but apart from that, David, you've got every single question right, which means you're joint top of the leaderboard. Oh, with oh, oh, and oh, oh, oh. No, we are man. Guys, wait a minute. What about the question Gredo gave me? That's a bonus point. I want to be the top. Are we taking that as a bonus? That's a bonus. That's true. Yeah. He's going to go in 16 then. He's going to go 16 points then. Stephen Martindale, top of the leaderboard. Top of the leaderboard. Top of the leaderboard. Top of the leaderboard, David. David, honestly, mate, thanks for getting up your time. You've been one of the best guests for that, mate. Yeah, I appreciate it. Good luck, by the way. Good luck. Thanks, David. Good luck for the rest of the season and next season, mate. All the best. All the best, David. Cheers. Thank you.